If you have been reading the newspapers the last decades, you might have heard about the greenhouse effect and an imbalance in the carbon cycle. That has to do with burning fossil fuels, and that is not the carbon cycle we will discuss today. We take it a few steps smaller and zoom in to the local natural carbon cycle. We start with the pool of CO2 in the atmosphere. Plants will use this CO2 and water in their photosynthesis. The water is split and carbohydrates and oxygen is formed. From the carbohydrates, the plant can grow. This plant material will be eaten by animals that oxidize it while excreting CO2 from their breath. Or plants will die and are respired into CO2 by microorganisms. The CO2 from the air can be used again for photosynthesis, etc. This is the simplified natural carbon cycle. Of course, there is also a balance between CO2 dissolved in the water bodies of the world depending on temperature and pH, but we will not discuss that one here. A recent development is that the sugars of plant material can also be converted into bioalcohols by baker's yeast. When the bioalcohols are used as an energy source, for example by using it as fuels for our cars, it is converted into CO2 and water. And this can be used for plant growth again. We can avoid the stress on fossil fuels in this way and keep the small carbon cycle closed. But we put additional stress on agricultural ground and the ability to feed the world population. Well, Where does sewage treatment enter the story? That is to solve a local imbalance in this carbon cycle. Crops are produced in the countryside and transported to a densely populated area. Let's call them cities. In the cities, people process and eat the crops and excrete high amounts of carbon compounds. Also, industries pollute their waters with carbon compounds left over from their process. These compounds could end up in the surface water. But the amount would exceed the natural degradation capacity, leading to oxygen depleted, smelly water bodies. Therefore, wastewater treatment is introduced. Here the carbon compounds are oxidized by the bacteria back into CO2 and water. CO2 leaves the treatment plant, enters the atmosphere and travels back to the plants, where it can be incorporated again. We could add one step to this local carbon cycle. In the treatment plant, bacteria grow while degrading the carbon compounds. Remember that that could be expressed by the yield, as discussed in the course before. These extra bacteria, as well as other carbon-rich material, as plant material, kitchen waste, used toilet paper, manure, etc., can be converted anaerobically into methane by archaea. This methane can be used as energy source or converted into transport fuel. This closes the loop, with energy production as an intermediate, without stressing food production. Summarizing, in sewage treatment, organic matter or carbon compounds can be oxidized aerobically into CO2 and water, or anaerobically into CO2 and methane. A step to close the cycle in imbalanced areas.